This is now class two of the 16 class driver education program. While the first class driving on side streets did go over in some parts right of way, we'll be focusing much more of the rules and regulations involving the right of way in this second class. As you learned in the first class, it's all about the proper way to pull away from a curb and the proper hand positions. And remember, watch for the movement. As we look ahead, we see movement on both the right and left, and we're prepared for whatever could possibly come from that movement. When it comes to stop signs, there's all different rules and regulations involving stop signs. There's somebody who could have benefited from the three-quarter turn method. Approaching a stop sign, you make your full stop, and since you're the first car to stop, you can go because you have the right of way. The next stop sign that we come to The next stop sign that we come to is going to be an all-way stop. And no, an all-way stop does not mean that that's the one that you have to stop all the way at. An all-way stop means, now here we will stop and we will give the right-of-way, okay, so she's going to allow us to go. We were ready to give the right of way to the pedestrian with the baby carriage, but she told us to go. The next stop sign, as we focus on that stop sign, it says stop all way. All way stops mean that all four corners have stop signs. And the first car to stop has the right of way. As we approach the next stop sign, and we learn to scan side to side, we see that it does not say all way. So as we make our stop, we need to inch up to be able to see because the cross street would have the right of way. So we inch up, we make sure it's safe, and then we finish our turn. Looking far ahead, we're not liking what we see as we see the truck with the arrow. So we're already notified what's going on up ahead and we will carefully approach that truck. Looks like they're going to open up a fire hydrant or two to make sure there is water pressure for when the fire trucks need. Again, a situation like this, we're making a left-hand turn. If a car was coming towards us, they would have the right of way. If a car was on the left, making a left, we would have the right of way as they would be the one to approach the T corner as we discussed in the previous class. Again, we see the stop sign hiding behind the tree. This particular stop sign, as we stop here, we see this is a two-way stop. There are stop signs on the corner that we are approaching and the corner that's approaching us, 
but to the right and to the left, there are no stop signs, <clears throat> which automatically give the traffic coming from that direction the right of way. Too many times people will say, well, I'm stopped, so it's my right of way. But if the cross street does not have a stop sign, then you do not have the right of way in a case like that. <clears throat> so right of way is critical in learning to drive. Right of way also determines fault in many, many, many accidents. And again, we approach an all-way stop. Now, we're going to discuss the right-hand rule. We'll stay here for just a second as we approach the stop sign to discuss the right-hand rule. Any time two cars arrive and stop at the same time at either an uncontrolled intersection, which would be no traffic signs and no lights, or a four-way stop intersection. Anytime they arrive and stop at the same time, then the driver that is to the right would have the right of way. So as they stop, if there was somebody to our right that stopped at the same time as we did, we would allow them to go because they have the right of way. If we decided to go before that car and an accident occurred, we would be at fault. And remember, right of way determines fault in many, many, many accidents. A corner like this, again, as you approach, your eyes should be scanning side to side because the cross street here does not have a stop sign. So you look, you make sure it's safe. As long as it's safe, you're okay to go. When a sign says all way, then obviously the first car to stop has the right of way or the car to the right has the right of way or if a car is turning left and a car is going straight, then the car going straight has the right of way. Now sometimes you will come to an all way stop where it does not even say all way. So don't always expect a four way stop to have that additional sign underneath it that says all way. We are now venturing a little bit away from one neighborhood as we approach a traffic light. How about that? As the light turns green, we now will proceed as obviously any car with a green light has the right of way over a car with a red light. As we start to move a little bit over, knowing that that red Jeep is going to be coming over to avoid hitting the big truck, you always have to be alert and aware of what's happening on the road. Another all-way stop. But as we make our turn, and look up ahead, we now see a stop sign. Now, we need to approach this carefully because the cross street doesn't have a stop sign because it doesn't say all way, right? Wrong. This happens to be an area where there are indeed four stop signs, but you do not see that additional rectangular sign underneath the stop sign indicating all way. Many times you will get confused by this, but you have to learn to watch both sides of the road at all times, so that way you are alert 
And again, as you approach a corner like this, you will see stop signs on all four sides of the street, but no all way sign. Again, as we approach, we're focusing on the rules and the regulations of the right of way. Again, four way stops. First car to stop has the right of way. Two cars stop at the same time. Who has the right of way? That's right, the car to the right. Intersection like this, we have the stop sign. We see the truck coming from the right. He has no stop sign, so he's got the right of way. Waiting for the second vehicle. And even though they're making a left-hand turn in front of us, they still have the right of way. So we will sit and wait. Do not begin to move up to make your turn. While someone is approaching to make theirs, you will cut off the area that they need to complete their turn safely. Here's another corner where it indicates four stop signs, but it doesn't show that it's an all-way stop. So always be alert. Not every neighborhood that you drive in is going to have that additional rectangular sign as we see at this stop sign, again stating all-way. Sometimes it will actually say four-way. Also, don't always expect people to give you the right of way. If you have to wait that extra second to let somebody go, it doesn't matter. Make sure that you get through the intersection safely and sometimes you do need to wait. Another all-way stop. One, two, three. Don't forget the three count. Again, watch for any movement. There's a car coming out from the left. And he went right through the stop sign as well. Full complete stop. One, two, three, and you're off. Again, make sure you make a full stop. Now here, we can't see what's coming from the left and they don't have a stop sign, so we'll inch up a little. Make sure it's safe before we proceed with our turn. Finish the turn.
One, two, three. And you don't have to say it out loud. Just say it to yourself. Because if you did that on the road test, they think you're nuts. Watching for the movement on the left hand side. Child wearing a helmet. Pedestrians running in the street up ahead. Watching for the movement and whatever could possibly come from that movement. You're so much more prepared when you see things ahead of time. You're able to react quicker. Because even though it's an all-way stop, as you begin to go, somebody might be coming from the side and you'd be forced to stop suddenly. But because you saw the movement, you were prepared for it. Actually, in that particular case, there wasn't a car, but you know what? There sure as heck could have been. That's what you want to learn. The more practice you get, the better. New York State requires, if you are under the age of 18, that you have at least 50 hours of supervised driving before taking a road test. And your parents must also sign off on this. So in order for you to take a road test, you'll have to have those required hours on the road if you're under the age of 18. Those 50 hours will require at least 15 hours after sunset and five hours in moderate to heavy traffic. Watching all the cars going through the intersection. Now here's the situation. We're going straight. The truck coming towards us is making a left. We have the right of way, but it looks like, no, nope, they actually did give us the right of way. We give them a little wave. Learning about courtesy. If someone moves over for you, give them a little wave. If you move over for them, you can't tell me that you're not looking at them to make sure that they give you a little wave. And if they don't, so be it. Don't let it bother you. Many people let things like that bother them. Pedestrian crossing has the right of way.
another corner where the stop is an all-way stop. This is only a three-way stop, so it is a T corner for the cars coming from the right, but it's a four-way, excuse me, a three-way stop. find that you will be faced with many, many, many different situations involving the right of way. Always reread the driver's manual for specific definitions of the right of way. Work with an instructor, work with your parents. Don't just take things lightly when you drive. Learn the proper ways to handle a vehicle. Again, as we approach a T corner where we are the only one with the stop sign, so the cross street would have the right of way. Now we'll be making a left turn at this traffic light. We have a green light. See the pedestrian on the left. stop sign and again the cross street does not you can see we have a few trees down in the area as hurricane Isaias came through here a week ago Another T corner approaching as we approach the Seaford train station. We have the stop sign, so the cross street has the right of way. Looking ahead, another four way stop. Stop full before the white line. Give the right of way, even though they were turning left. Another all 
play stop. Full complete stop. The one, two, three count in your head. Always plan it out. Say, okay, I have a stop sign. I don't see any signs on the other side, so I better make sure it's safe before I proceed. The bush is blocking the view, so we'll move up until we can see around it, and then carefully make our turn. Approaching the station again, going back this way as there was something that I did want to point out. Keeping in mind that when it comes to signs, anytime you see a yellow sign, you are being warned of something. Don't take the word warning lightly. Warning means warning. Stop signs are considered regulatory signs, but all yellow signs are warning signs. As we make the turn here, we look up ahead on the right, we see a warning sign. The warning sign is warning us that there is a stop sign. Remember, when it comes to stop signs, they're the only octagon-shaped sign. So when it comes to stop signs, you can tell it's a stop sign, whether it says stop, whether you're looking at the front of the sign or the back of the sign, you can tell it's a stop sign. So that particular sign is warning us that there is a stop sign. And the arrow is telling us that it is ahead. So there is a stop sign ahead. Warning, stop sign ahead. Basically, any warning sign, you can put the word ahead after. When you see something yellow, it is warning you of something ahead of time. So as we make this right turn, we see a sign on the right that says children at play. They are ahead. So we have to watch for those children at play. Again, remember what we talked about earlier, watch for any movement. If the child is playing on the side of the, of the road and all of a sudden the ball rolls into the street, there are a lot of children that will not stop to look for the cars They'll just dart right out after the ball. But if we, the driver, are paying attention to something like that and we see that ball, knowing that a child will follow, we'll be careful. Note the sign that they put up right in the middle of the road, warning us that there are kids playing. So we have to be really careful as we approach. That one even had a dog on it. Stop sign ahead. There it is. We make the stop. We look on the right as we make the turn. Another yellow sign is warning us that children are at play. Remember, any yellow sign is warning you of something that is happening ahead. You see the car coming from the left, but it is our right of way as we are the first car to stop for that stop sign.
and again secure the vehicle put it in park turn the signal off continuing with the right of way the right of way is critical when it comes to your road test if you're on your road test and you arrive at a situation where it's a four-way stop and you stop at the same time as somebody else and they tell you to go, what do you do? You know what? You wave them back on and tell them to go. That would be the wise thing to do when it comes to the road test. Many times people will get waved on and they'll just go, but it's better to wave the other driver back on to show the DMV examiner that you know who has the right of way in that particular situation. We're coming out to a main road up ahead where we want to approach safely because there are no stop signs. So again, we call that a T corner because it forms the letter T. Be making a left-hand turn at this particular T corner, being very careful for the cars coming from the left and from the right. The bush is blocking our view and when it comes to something like this, while it's okay to see before the bush, and it's okay to look under the bush, it's okay to look over the bush, but don't ever do anything until you can clearly see around the bush. Remember, it's okay to look under, it's okay to look over, it's okay to look through the bush, but don't do anything until you can clearly see around the bush. Any obstruction for that matter, not just a bush. Could be a fence, could be a vehicle, anything. Approach the traffic light, we'll make a left-hand turn. Cars going straight, we'll have the right-of-way. Future classes will focus much more on the proper ways to make left turns at traffic lights. But we start by making sure there are no oncoming cars before we finish our turn. Watching for the movement of the pedestrian on the right and what could possibly come from that movement. More of Isaias. This damage. Many homes in this area had power out for quite some time. Another all-way, three-way stop. Full complete stop. Make sure there's no other stopped vehicles. We would have been the car to the right on that one, so it would have given us the right of way. Lots of firewood available.
gives us the right of way. Corner like this, cross street as the right of way because they do not have a stop sign. So remember, there are many rules and regulations involving the right of way. Everything can be found in your New York State Driver's Manual or your Driver Education textbook. Two, three. And the good old three quarter turn that we learned in the first class. Any methods that you can come up with that would help you? For instance, there's something that we call the smog technique, S-M-O-G, the smog technique. It is something that you would use anytime you are moving in any sort of a lateral direction. In reviewing the smog technique, it starts with pulling away from the curb. So once pulling away from the curb, you think to yourself, smog. Then the letter S stands for signal. Failing to signal on your road test will cost you points. The letter M stands for mirrors. So using your rear view and your left side view mirror because you're pulling from right to left. The letter O stands for looking over your shoulder. And by the way, failing to check your mirrors will cost you points as well as failing to check your blind spot. When you see that it is clear, then you can go. That's the G, S, signal, M, mirrors, O, over the shoulder, G, if it's safe, go. SMOG is an acronym where each letter stands for something. So when you pull up to a corner and you're going to pull away or if you're going to change lanes, you're going to say to yourself, smog and you will remember all the steps because once again failure to signal will cost you points failing to check your mirrors will cost you points failing to look over your shoulder will cost you points and if it's safe you can go if you happen to go when it's not safe Cutting someone off, that will not only cost you points, but it will cost you to fail your road test. So remember to smog it. Another simple way to remember. A 
T corner where there are no stop signs. Who's got the right of way? That's right, the car in the T. John Street. Here's where we can make the turn at the same time. Because I'm making a right and that car was making a left. We don't interfere with each other, so the turn can be made at the same time. Now here, this truck is blocking my view. I can't see. But as you look on the opposite side of the road, you will see that octagon shape of a stop sign and now I know that even though I couldn't see it I have a stop sign so I'll make my full complete stop car stopped and they're turning right I'm turning left so the car turning right has the right-of-way again the rules of right-of-way sometimes may seem complicated, but if you study them and ask questions, if you're with somebody in the car, ask questions, okay? Obviously, if you're driving by yourself, well, you can't do that with a learner permit now, can you? But ask questions. Watching for the movement, the dog on the side, Yes, I know there was an owner too, but I focus more on the dog. Another T corner. Who's got the right of way? The car in the T. In the next class, we will be learning the three-point U-turn, which is something that is a required maneuver when it comes to you taking your New York State road tests. The three-point turn. You're probably also wondering, when are we gonna get to parallel parking? That comes much later in the program. ready to make this left turn whoops we're being warned that it's a dead end that end means you can't go nowhere there is no outlet people lucky enough to live on dead end streets do not have to worry about all those people driving 50 miles an hour past their homes <laughs> 